Hey, welcome back. It's Jason Walter here. Thanks to the CARES Act that was passed on March 27th last year, this allows qualified homeowners to enter into a mortgage loan forbearance. So what the heck is a forbearance? In short, it's an agreement between the loan servicer, which is a company you pay your mortgage to, and the homeowner to temporarily pause mortgage payments for a set period of time. There's a lot of confusion about how this program works, who's eligible, uh, what happens after the forbearance period is over, and will this impact your credit? So in today's video, I'm gonna be clearing up this confusion and give you everything you need to know about the forbearance program. And before that, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. I post videos about how this pandemic is affecting our real estate market and I really enjoy making these videos for you. Also, if you do appreciate these videos, please hit the like button because that helps support this channel and boost this video out to others. Thank you so much for doing that. So in a nutshell, a forbearance plan allows qualified homeowners to stop paying their mortgage for up to 12 months. Keywords there is up to, because you can't do a forbearance plan for longer than 12 months, which I'll go over here in just a little bit here. Um, but you can do this if you're experiencing a financial hardship. So if you lost your job and you're having a hard time paying your mortgage, you can reach out to your loan servicer, which again is the company you pay your mortgage to, and request a loan forbearance. This was made possible thanks to the CARES Act that was the $2 trillion stimulus package that was passed into law last March. The CARES Act provided the following, $1,200 stimulus checks to Americans, assistance to small businesses such as the Paycheck Protection Program and the EIDL program, increased unemployment pay, and the right to request a forbearance, and much, much more. In this video, I'm gonna be going over all the details for homeowners of one to four units. Uh, this is for single family houses, duplexes, triplexes, and fourplexes. In addition to that, also condos and townhouses. Uh, multifamily borrowers, by the way, are protected under the CARES Act. They are allowed to do a loan forbearance, but only up to 90 days thanks to the CARES Act. So in this video, I'm only gonna be going over for homeowners of one to four units. In order to qualify for the forbearance protections under the CARES Act, homeowners must have a federally backed mortgage. So you may be asking yourself, what in the world is a federally backed mortgage and how do I know if I have one? These are loans that are backed by or insured by the FHA, VA, USDA, or Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. If you don't know which category your loan falls under, I would recommend to call your loan servicer, which again is a company you pay your mortgage payments to. If you know that your loan is not an FHA loan, a VA loan, or a USDA loan, and you wanna know whether or not your loan is backed by Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, I'll leave two links in the description below for you so you can find out whether or not your loan is backed by these government entities. And by the way, these are very common for conventional mortgages. Okay, to get a better understanding of the forbearance plan, let's have a look at the actual bill itself of the CARES Act. So it states the following, a borrower with a federally backed mortgage loan experiencing a financial hardship due indirectly or directly to the COVID-19 emergency may request forbearance on the federally backed mortgage loan by submitting a request to the borrower servicer and affirming that the borrower is experiencing a financial hardship due to the COVID-19 emergency. Examples of this, of course, would be if you lost your job or if you're sick and unable to work or if your business is underwater thanks to this pandemic. The CARES Act bill goes on to say that this forbearance shall be granted for up to 180 days and shall be extended for an additional period of up to 180 days at the request of the borrower. So again, this is for 12 months total, but only if you have a federally backed mortgage. Also, no additional fees or interest shall be charged to the homeowners beyond what was already agreed to, meaning you won't be charged a fee in order to enter into a forbearance. If someone reaches out to you and says, hey, I'll get you into a forbearance plan, it's just gonna be a small fee to do that. It is a scam. You do not have to pay a fee in order to enter into a forbearance. You simply have to just call your loan servicer. And upon receiving a request for forbearance from the borrower, the servicer shall, with no additional documentation required other than the borrower's attestation to a financial hardship caused by the COVID-19 emergency, provide the forbearance for up to 180 days, 
which may be extended for additional period of up to 180 days at the request of the borrower. In other words, the text of this bill says that you do not have to prove to your loan servicer that you are having a financial hardship. You just have to attest the fact that you are having one. So you'd call your loan servicer and say, hey, I'm having a financial hardship due to COVID-19. I want to enter into a mortgage loan forbearance. So if you do have a federally backed mortgage, it's very, very easy to enter into a forbearance because you don't have to prove that you are having a financial hardship. At least this is what the text says from the CARES Act. In other words, some people may be doing a forbearance even if they do not need it and taking that savings of not paying their mortgage and buying GameStop stock instead. Another point here, it says that the forbearance may be extended for an additional 180 days for a total of one year. So if you do want an extension to get the 12 month forbearance, you have to request this extension. It does not happen automatically. This is because your initial forbearance may only be for a few months. So I noticed on Mr. Cooper's website, they are the fourth largest loan servicer in the United States. They only do forbearances in three to six month increments. So you would have to keep on requesting extensions if you want a 12 month forbearance. A common question I get regarding forbearances is, will this negatively affect my credit? So I don't wanna give you just one source. I actually found three sources for you so you can get a better understanding about whether or not your credit will be impacted. According to consumerfinance.gov, servicers may report that your account is in forbearance. So in other words, they may mark your account that you are in forbearance. Um, however, if you are otherwise current on your account and have received relief as defined by the CARES Act, your servicer or creditor is required to report your account as current. If you stop making mortgage payments without a forbearance agreement, the servicer will report this information to your credit reporting companies and it could have a lasting negative impact on your credit history. So big picture here, if you want to do a forbearance, make sure you get permission from your loan servicer before you stop paying your mortgage. However, if you are in forbearance and you are outside the qualification of a CARES Act, so maybe for example, you do not have a federally backed mortgage, then your loan servicer could report you as not current. However, every loan servicer is different, so make sure you contact your loan servicer before you enter into a loan forbearance to get all the details and make sure you get that in writing. Another resource that I found for you is knowyouroptions.com. And this is a Fannie Mae website and it states right there on the website the following. If you are current on your loan before you start a forbearance plan or another accommodation covered by the CARES Act, you will be reported as current to the credit bureau as long as you continue to make your payments as required by the plan you're set up in or as long as no payments are required under the plan. Again, big picture here, this only applies for forbearances as defined by the CARES Act. In addition, I also went to Mr. Cooper's website and it states the following, will my credit be affected during the pandemic forbearance plan? If you receive a forbearance because you're impacted by COVID-19, any payments that are paused during the forbearance won't be reported late to the credit bureaus. Okay, so a forbearance plan we know now is a temporary pause of your mortgage payments. However, here's a very, very common misconception, and that is forbearances do not mean your payments are forgiven or erased. Therefore, you must pay all your missed payments back. Eventually, they will not be forgiven. Now, how those missed payments are paid back varies by who owns your loan. The potential options of repayment include making a one-time lump sum payment of all your missed payments, uh, doing a loan modification, moving some or all of the amount owed to the end of your loan, which is also called a payment deferral, or simply setting up a repayment plan that spreads the amount over several months. However, if you do have a federally backed mortgage, you are not required to repay skip payments in a lump sum once the forbearance period ends. I made a separate video about all your options available to you once you want to end your forbearance plan, so I'll leave a link in the description below for that video. If you don't have a federally backed mortgage and you wanna know what options you have to pay back your missed payments once your forbearance plan ends, then consumerfinance.gov recommends the following. Check with your loan servicer for the forbearance repayment options that they offer. 
You may be able to find information about forbearance programs by checking the websites of your lender and servicer for more detailed information. Be sure to inquire about what limitations, options, and fees may apply to the repayment of your loan due to the fact that it's not fairly backed. So to summarize this, every servicer for non-federally backed loans may handle forbearances differently. So for example, they may offer forbearance that are less than 12 months, or they may charge you a fee to enter into a forbearance. In addition, the repayment options could vary by loan servicer as well. So for example, they may require you to do a balloon payment once you end your forbearance plan. My advice to you if you do not have a federally backed mortgage is to contact your loan servicer, ask them what options are available to you, get all the details and get that in writing. Another common question I get, is it too late to start a forbearance? And the answer is, it's not too late. For example, if your mortgage is backed by Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, at the time of this video, it's not too late to start a forbearance plan. However, and this is super important, so please share this video with anyone you know, because if you have an FHA loan and you have not entered into a forbearance yet, then your time is running out. This is because the deadline to request an initial forbearance of an FHA loan was recently extended until March 31st, 2021. This could allow borrowers additional time to request and obtain up to six months of an initial pause on their mortgage payment. And because FHA loans are federally backed mortgages, you could request another six month extension to get a 12 month forbearance plan. And just to make sure everyone's clear on this, because I'm seeing a lot of misinformation on YouTube about this, this does not mean you get another year of a forbearance if you have an FHA loan. This is simply saying that if you have not entered into a forbearance yet, then you do have until March 31st to request an initial forbearance plan. If you enjoyed watching this video, please hit the like button. Thank you so much for doing that. This video took hours to make, so I greatly appreciate your support. Also, if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, please do so because I love making videos for you about how this pandemic is affecting our real estate market. You also can follow me on Instagram. I'm Sacramento Realtor. Hope you have an awesome day and look forward to seeing you on the next video.